coronic artery aneurysm in a pre pregnant patient. It will be presented by Dr. Garza from the University of Arizona. Dr. Garza. Thank you. So this is a three-year-old female. Uh, it was referred to us at the 27-week pregnancy. Uh, with a one-year history of uh, left upper coronal abdominal pain and uh, an incident to find on a spinal artery aneurysm. Her past surgical history is uh, significant for a C-section, lap colostectomy, and lap appendectomy. History of present Ill illness includes uh, progressive left upper quadrabdominal pain after a failed embolization attempt at the 25 week of weeks of pregnancy. She was in severe pain with 9 of 10 and nausea and vomiting since then. So a CT angiogram was performed after embolization attempt and 1.6 centimeter sacular spinal artery without evidence of rupture of sterilization was identified and localized as well. As you can see here, the gravid uterus and the spinal artery aronism. Are so because of the symptoms of the patient, the patient was scheduled for laparoscopic spinectomy and resection of the spinal artery aneurysm. And the patient was placed in the right lateral divitis position with, uh, and four, four trocars, bladeless trocars were, were used. The first one was uh, introduced by an open approach, and the rest of them were introduced by a direct visualization. We used a 10 millimeter, 30 uh, degree scope, and um, lemon peritoneum was induced uh, 12 millimeter of mercury pressure. So as you can see here, a 15 uh, millimeter trocar was placed in the left midclavicular line, as well as a five millimeter trocar in the epigastrum. A gravid uterus was observed. A visualizes of the left flank was done first to allow the insertion of the five millimeter trocar that was used by the assistant. Attachments of the lower pole of the spleen were divided with the harmonic scalpel first. The coexplanic ligament was uh, divided as well with the harmonic scalpel uh, using contraction of, this, of the lower pole of the spleen with a grasper. The different colic and the, the different splenic ligaments were taken down uh, as well. The, the spleen was free from the ventral surface of the left kidney. So then the, <coughs> the spleen was mobilized and a four by four was introduced, was introduced to uh, provide anterior traction of the left lobe of the liver. So now the gastrosplenic ligament was exposed and the assistant provides lateral retraction of the spleen and the chorogastric vessels were taken down with the harmonic scalpel. So finally the spleen was freed from its attachments and you can see here the gastrosplenic ligament was taken down. So then the splenic artery was identified. And the dissection started uh, with the harmonic scalpel and went down proximal uh, using the hook artery. Uh, you will see next. So the hook artery was used to uh, isolate the splenic artery from the tail of the pancreas. As the spleen was isolated, we realized that the splenic artery aneurysms were was exactly there. And it's shown in the, in the video. So then a small accessory artery, uh, splenic artery was uh, identified and it was, uh, it was clipped 
and divide it with, with scissors. Next, a window was created using the harmonic scalpel to allow the insertion of 45 and the GIA was white low stapler with same word. As you can see, the uh, earnings is about the stapler. So then the spleen was lifted with two graspers and the splenic vein, wa the splenic vein was exposed. And then in the end of EI 60, quite a low stapler was uh, used to divide the splenic vein. So then um, an endo catchback was introduced to the 15 millimeter trocar, morselated and extracted for the, uh, through, through it. So the operate oh, the OT was 90 minutes, uh, estimated blood loss was 5 cc. The patient was discharged six days after surgery, but he was signed off from our service 72 hours after, after the surgery. Um, there were no complications and the fetal heart rate was 155 after the surgery. Thank you. Video is open for discussion. We have quite a few text questions. Why don't we Why don't we start with uh, right in the aisle I think first? Excellent video, great dissection. But was there any consideration made of just either tying the vessel and stapling it on both sides and leaving the sleeve in place in a lady who's pregnant and you want to get out fast? Your question was uh, if uh, we take the spleen. I mean, no, the spleen. just staple the splenic artery and leave the spleen and everything behind. Yeah, oh, the, the, exclu the exclusion method. Yeah, mean. Just yeah. The well, it's for 1.5 centimeters. Yeah, well, it was not an option in this case because we were thinking about post mobilization syndrome. So if, if you take uh, the splenic artery, so the irrigation of the splenic, of the, uh, the splitting will, be, will diminish. So the pain was the reason that we, we did the surgery uh, with because we, we were thinking about splenic infarcts. So, um, that's, that was the reason that we take, uh, we take it off. I mean, you already embolized the vessel, so the splenic... But it was, a, it was, it was a fail, it was a fail embolization, no. And then we certainly have some other text questions concerned with the uh, hemodynamics of the, uh, uh, pregnant patient in the uh, right lateral decubitus. Was there any special considerations with patient positioning preoperatively for her? Yeah, well, um... As you know, there are two approaches to do this, the, the anterior approach or the right lateral decubitus. So we think that uh, if the patient totally in the right lateral decubitus, the pressure on the IVC will, will be affected. Thank you. 